I'm Paul McQuaid and welcome to Roaring Back. Now here we are on the lower west side of Manhattan, the Meatpacking District, at the High Line, which is both a nonprofit organization and a public park. Today, the High Line boasts a bunch of amazing gardens, as well as art installations, and some delicious places to grab some food. But its history actually dates back to the 1930s when it was an elevated train line that came into New York City to deliver goods. Now, one of those goods was meat. In the 1900s, 250 slaughterhouses operated within the district. Now, with the invention of reliable refrigeration for meat by the 1930s, this was the number three market for meat in the entire country. Five of those companies still actually operate within the district today, but we've traded in a lot of butcher shops for boutiques, bars, nightclubs, and coffee shops. So let's go check some of them out. The Meatpacking District is world-renowned for its nightlife. And before I go any further, R.I.P. Cielo. Fantastic nightclub I used to frequent a lot. But now, you have a ton of different options. There's Tao Downtown, there's Ketch, and there's also the iconic Standard Hotel, which has everything from a club upstairs, Labine, which has an outdoor space and another little surprise. They also have the beer garden in the fall, which is fantastic for large groups, as well as another cafe and grill. And while the meatpacking district is world renowned for its nightlife, it's also great for some daytime strolling, as made evident by the permanent pedestrian mall, which was just put in place. So if it's relaxing that you wanna do, there's the High Line, or there's also Little Islands Park, one of the hottest new outdoor spaces in New York City. After that, if you're hungry, you can go to one of the many restaurants in the neighborhood, like Pastis or STK, or if you're like me, on a hot summer day, you wanna just close out with a nice glass of orange wine. So let's go to Anfora, one of the best natural wine bars in the city. It was a nice long day of shooting, uh, and uh, as I mentioned, always in the hot weather, um, it's fantastic to come get a nice glass of orange wine, relax, and, uh, and chill out. So we're here at Anfora, which is one of my favorite natural wine bars in the city. It's actually the sister wine bar to Lartusi. Uh, which is one of the best Italian restaurants in the entire city. Um, so right here we have a nice orange wine, which is from Slovakia. I forget exactly which producer, but come down, see Cody and the team. They'll set you straight no matter what. Whatever your palate really is craving at that time, um, they will match you up perfectly with wine. So here's to a great day. And some nice orange wine here at Amphora. Uh, Amphora is actually the name of the clay pot that wine is distilled in especially um, you know, back in the day, so it's actually um, introduces the least amount of contact and gives the most flavor um, and skin contact to the wine. So that's hence the name Anfora. Uh, it reminds me, one of the best, uh, the best days I had here, I was here, was, I believe it was actually winter time and we were nice and warm out here um, and I was with my friend Greg, uh, but we came here and we got a, uh, um, at least one nice bottle of natural wine, uh, possibly two, uh, and then from there, we went over to the Whitney Museum and walked through it. So uh, if you haven't been to the Whitney Museum of American Art, I implore you to go. It is one of my favorite museums in the world, um, and it happens to be right here in New York, uh, which is great. I personally have to happen to have a dual membership, uh, which I've had for, I think, like five years now. Uh, and what's great about it is when you're walking and it's a hot day or anything and you just want to pop in, you can just pop in the museum, see some great art, see a killer sunset, um, and kind of just be able to relax without feeling pressure uh, to, to be, whether it be spending money or a table or anything like that. So um, I really, really suggest going to the Whitney if you haven't gone. Um, they just had a Warhol exhibit for, for um, I guess it was uh, for a, few, a bunch of months, uh, which was great, uh, fantastic. I brought my mom to, and, uh, and she loved it. Uh, and the best, but honestly, one of the best things about uh, the Whitney Museum is its reciprocal admission program. And what that is, is with the membership that you have, it allows you to enter other museums all over not only just the country, um, but even the world, which is fantastic. Uh, you also have, uh, you know, um, they give you membership tickets to member nights um, to preview exhibits and everything. Um, so that's like really, really something that's worth it to do while you're here in the Meatpacking District. It's actually just fantastic to be back in the Meatpacking District because in 2020, you know, with COVID, uh, this neighborhood was disproportionately affected by the virus because of its heavy dependency on nightlife. So if you're not able to operate, it's hard to stay open. So a lot of places ended up actually closing down. Um, now they're coming back, uh, which is fantastic to see. But that being said, uh, some of the businesses have actually stood the test of time. Uh, one of which being Cobra Coffee. Not only is Cobra Coffee a fantastic coffee shop, it's also a speakeasy. And, you know, I think which exemplifies the transition that this neighborhood's been through over the years, you know, from coffee supply to an awesome, awesome nightlife spot for people to go to. So, let's go talk to Sean and Brian, the two of the partners there, who can tell us all about it. Go check it out. All right. 
We're here at the Cobra Coffee Company in the Meatpacking District on the corner of 13th and 9th. A fourth generation operation who not only sits here with an amazing coffee shop as well as a fantastic speakeasy downstairs. Sean, Brian, how are you? Great. Great, Paul. Fantastic. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks for sitting down and meeting us. So, can you talk to us a little bit about the history, the family heritage of the business, and how you guys got to this point? Yeah, absolutely. Cobrick's a fourth generation family owned coffee roasting company. Um, so, they were based out of New York, been here since 1920. Craft um, specialty coffee, you know, sourced from all over the world. And a few years ago, we partnered up with them, Sean, myself, our other business partner, Eric, um, with the Cobrick family, and we opened up their first retail concept which is uh, you know, coffee shop and uh, speakeasy cocktail bar. Yeah, the, the, the coffee shop's like a, a take of a, you know, an old Italian cafe meets a 1920s prohibition bar. Where on one side we serve every kind of coffee possible, um, and then here on the speakeasy side where we're sitting right now, our specialty is coffee infused cocktails. We, are, we have our own little coffee take on some uh, classic cocktails such as an old fashioned, we have an old slip. Okay. Uh, of course we have the, 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 uh, the, the espresso martini like every other place does as well, but then we have some other ones as well, like a Negroni, a Kyoto Negroni. So that's like our, our thing here on the, on the speakeasy side. Oh wow, fantastic. And so when did you have the idea to open up the speakeasy and kind of expand this way uh, and really you know, offer our customers in this neighborhood, um, you know, another option. Uh, I think, uh, you know, kind of before, while we wanted to sit down here, I think this company really embodies the neighborhood and its evolution under one roof. Whereas it was a supply company, then we went as a commodity good, uh, coffee, and then now to be able to offer a nightlife offer, you know, offer nightlife to these, you know, amazing residents so they can come here midday and then maybe go home and have a quick change and, and come back. Um, so talk us and, you know, walk us through a little bit of how, you know, you guys came about the decision to, to you know, break through and make the speakeasy over here. Well, yeah, as you know, the meatpacking district is known for, it's named because, uh, you know, back in its day, it was strictly here as a warehouse for meats, for food, for salmon. And at one point, the Kobricks uh, family ha housed a coffee warehouse here. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, so there's a lot of history behind the, not only the, the brand, but this neighborhood. And it made sense for us to bring the first retail here. Um, the Coburg family has been selling coffee for uh, importing and exporting coffee since the 1920s. Um, at one point, restaurants such as Nobu were selling their coffee, Martha Stewart was selling their coffee, uh, and then these restaurants would come and say, hey, can you help us build a coffee cocktail? Um, and at the time, it was a new wave of coffee companies that were coming and opening that had, you know, a more uh, connoisseur kind of feel to it, where like people got to really appreciate good coffee versus the, you know, the, 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 um, the, the names that we know at, at, at every home, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and then at that point, the Coburg family uh, you know, came out and said, hey, you know what, why don't we build our own coffee shop? Something where we could show everyone how great coffee served, but also create our own coffee cocktails. Yeah, exactly. And then that's where Brian and Eric and, and Scotty and us came together and thought of some great ideas to, to help build this brand. Um, and so that's amazing. So uh, as we kind of go into 2021, um, you know, flash or no flash, I suppose, uh, um, you know, how do you guys feel about the fall? Um, obviously, um, you know, with a new the vaccine mandate coming out, um, tell us a little bit about some different programs you have, um, some different, whether it be cocktails or anything you have going on, um, just to let everyone know that you're here, still here, you're going to be here. Um, and you're ready to rock. What's it. exciting uh, for us is that our brand has made it through and I think we've yep. grown in this community um, because of us having been open during COVID, whereas many, uh, many restaurants and, and cafes and, and coffee shops didn't. They closed um, and of course it was sad to see them go, but for the ones that made it through, it's an exciting time, right? Yep. You helped grow, build within your community and I think for us, you know, one of the scary things is the unknown, yep. right? There's the Delta variant and what can we do? People needing vaccinations to be able to enter your establishment starting, you know, now basically, uh, or having had their at least first shot. Um, you know, it, it's it's tough for us to, to say exactly how we're gonna adapt. We're gonna do the best we can. Yep. Um, we're gonna make sure that, you know, we, we stick to all the regulations, of course. But at the same time, part of what makes this place special is is the speakeasy side of it, is the vibe, is the energy yep. that we give off to these, these uh, our community saying, hey, you know what, no matter what you need, we're here for you. So whether, however we gotta do it, we'll figure it out. Awesome. Fantastic. And listen, so guys, appreciate your time so much. Thank you for sitting down. Uh, we're gonna order some food. I'd love to try one of these cocktails. 
If you like espresso martinis, you have no idea what you're in for when you come here to Cobrick. Speakeasy side, it's amazing. And uh, yeah, I'd love to show for you guys to show us around. To add to that, and if you're a tequila lover, we have our take on an espresso martini with tequila. It's called a Mexican jumping bean. You know, uh, Eric and the rest of the guys behind the bar make it better than anywhere else in the city. So, um, you saw I just jumped up from my seat. So it must be good. <laughs> not everyone's a, not everyone's a vodka person. A lot of yep. tequila drinkers. It's it's similar and it's delicious. Thank awesome. you so much again for sitting down. Appreciate yeah. the time and uh, yeah, let's check out the restaurant. Wow, what an amazing day we spent together here in the Meatpacking District. We touched on everything from its great history of the neighborhood, from relaxing at one of the great parks like the High Line, going and grabbing a nice glass of wine at Amphora, or coming to a place like Cobra Coffee, a fourth generation operation who has some of the best coffee in the neighborhood and also some infused cocktails, which will blow your socks off. So, next time you're in town, make sure you get here to the Meatpacking District and experience it for yourself. I'm Paul McQuaid, and I'll see you next time on Roaring Back.